Mm. We greet all of you tonight that have joined with us, both in body and in the live stream. It means very much to me personally to have kindred spirits. Now we're in the book of Jude. I have inadvertently skipped verse 6. <laughs> I forgot I was in the middle of that when I was called to another place. So I'll cover verse 6 next time. We're in verse 7 tonight. In keeping with uh, Moses and the prophets and Jesus and the apostles, Jude is merciless in dealing with false prophets. Amen. You will find that uh, holy men had absolute zero tolerance. Mm -hmm. None at all. No inspired man ever admonished people to pray for false prophets. If you think they did, you just have to find it, and then I'll, we'll correct that. But I understand we say false prophets. We don't mean someone that is mistaken or wrong. We mean someone who is deliberate, who has embraced a non inspired message and is perpetrating it willingly. False prophet is a prophet God didn't send. False prophets were never to be tolerated. Moses warned the people that if what a prophet said would come to pass didn't come to pass, they were to die. Of course, there are prophets today that offer things. They say, if you give it, do it, they'll, you'll have peace. You'll have more grace. And you'll be extra strong. If that doesn't come to pass, we're not, we're not taking people's lives. God does that. But, uh, yes? And we have an example of that with the prophet Jeremiah. <laughs> and the Pasha or pastor that he was called whenever he died, and it was very soon after he had made this false prophecy yeah. so that the people, it's like God made judgment between them That's before right. the people mm -hmm. and the false prophet died. That's right. Within 60 days. Yes. Within 60 days. Mm -hmm. Paul warned of them in 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen. Peter warned of them. 2 Peter 2, 1. John warned of them. 1 John 4, 1. Those who cause divisions and offenses to come to the doctrine, God's people are told, avoid them. Mark them, mark them, mark them. Identify them. Don't leave it a mystery. You know someone that's wrong, tell it. The old Wild West, we're told that the people traveling in desolate parts would find poison water, they stick up a sign. Don't Amen. drink this water. Mm -hmm. Amen. God's people got to do this. Somebody has to do it. Somebody has to do it. Amen. It has to be someone with discernment, mm -hmm. someone that understands. Point it out. Tell the people. Warn the people. Don't believe this. I understand, as I have said, that there are some that are conscientiously wrong, like Apollos, mm -hmm. but they're open to correction. They just need someone. They just need someone to tell them the yeah. tell them the truth. They did to Apollos. They recognized his heart and his spirit, and he went to be a mighty man of God. Now, the reason is uh, for the danger of false prophets is that their teachings defile. Mm -hmm. They corrupt lead ultimately to a falling away, regardless of how pleasing they sound. Paul said they eat, like their word eats like a cancer. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Satan has gospels that he uses, just like the Spirit uses the Word. Teachings through which he gains control of people. Professed Christian teachings that he uses to gain control of people. He has demonic emissaries that invent doctrines, doctrines of devils or demons, they're called in Scripture. Jude was so alarmed at the at the unwitting tolerance of false prophets, he had to write about this. There had been a certain deterioration that set in these believers. They had to be exhorted to contend earnestly. Earnestly. I mean, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't know of many professed Christians that are earnestly contending for the faith. There's too much sloppiness. Too much indifference, too much disinterest. I'm talking about in the church. Too many people in in play pens that ought to be out in the field working. See, it's a bad state, and it's reason because of things that have been taught. That's why. That's why Jude is uh, addressing this matter. Deterioration, retrogression, backslide, and if it's not arrested, mm -hmm. damns the soul. Amen. That's what we're talking about here. The backward motion has got to be stopped. Yeah. Because there's no known terminal point mm -hmm. of backsliding. Mm -hmm. So Jude writes about this matter. He's reasoning with them now about it because he was talking to unlearned people, not untaught people, unlearned people. False teachers had crept in undetected. God puts watchmen on the wall. But the watchman didn't blow the trumpet. Yeah. Maybe it's because he didn't recognize it. I don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. of the old time, watchmen were very important, Amen. Amen. particularly during the night, mm -hmm. to warn of impending disaster. Well, mm -hmm. the watchman dropped the ball yeah. among these believers. And the people that were corruptors crept in unawares. Now he's going to he's going to comment on these teachers because people are prone to be too kind to false teachers. Yes, that's right. Yep. They're prone to speak too accommodatingly uh, yes. and offer too many excuses and right. say yeah, but and all this. You doesn't do that. Yeah. You're going to tell you what kind of people these people are. They may appear polished. They may appear dignified. They may appear loving. They may appear thoughtful. He's going to comment on what they really are. Verse 7. Even, let me read verse 7, its entirety. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going ever strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, defies, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yes. Now they didn't appear to be doing that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's why they were undetected. They didn't seem to be doing that. Amen. But they were. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I mean, when you liken somebody to Sodom and Gomorrah, you... <laughs> See, someone can have the type of character that Sodom and Gomorrah has and be passed off as a Christian teacher. Yeah, yeah. That's what happened here. Uh -huh. This is a, the third example that Jude cites. Mm -hmm. The first was the Jews yeah. who went backward. Uh -huh. Second were the angels, uh -huh. kept not the first estate. Yeah. Now he's going to bring up Sodom and Gomorrah, liken them to them. 
he will show the condition of these false prophets cannot be corrected. Yeah. Amen. Uh, see, that's hard for mm -hmm. that's hard for a lot of Christians to swallow because they've been subjected to this mamby pamby stuff. That's right. It's it says it's irritating in a sense it makes me weep that people are so simple about critical matters. Even as, we're talking about these false prophets now, don't forget who he's talking about. But these false prophets, even as some say, some versions read, just as or in a similar way or likewise or don't forget, as with the Jews and the angels that fell, the condition of Sodom and Gomorrah was the result of retrogression and moral deterioration. They did, Sodom and Gomorrah didn't start out this way. They descended into this mode. Now the view of false prophets, of course, is heightened by the likeness to these two irretrievable irretrievable yeah. cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. Nothing good is said about them in all the scripture. Long before this time, in Genesis 3, 13, 13, the Lord said, the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. It's a long time before they actually were destroyed. That's the 13th chapter, 19th chapters when they were destroyed. When Abraham interceded concerning them shortly before they reached the point of no return, it wasn't because of them. He was not interceding for Sodom. That's right. He was interceding for Lot. Yeah, yeah. He seemed to know nothing can be done about Sodom. Uh -huh. yeah. it's, it's gone. It's, it's gone. Mm -hmm. But it was Lot. Will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? He knew the wicked were going to be destroyed. That's right. Well, his intercession worked. God... God got Lot, that righteous man, out of there. See, event, the righteous and the wicked have to be eventually, they have to be separated. Amen. This has to happen. If they're mingled, it should not be on purpose. Amen. Amen. Isn't that why it tells... That the, uh, the, to come out of them might be right. come out of them, not right. not become one with them. See, you've got a you've got a dreadful situation on your hand that most Christians can't tell the difference between righteous and unrighteous. They can't tell the difference between sheep and goats and wheat and tares. They can't tell the difference. That's what the trouble is. That's what the trouble was with these people Jews writing to. They couldn't tell the difference. It wasn't because that's the way God makes people. This is not the characteristic of the new creation. Amen. This is not how the new man is. This is because a corrupt gospel has been preached and has distorted the whole picture. All right, so, so young people, when you're young, don't pick bad friends. Amen. Even if you, if you don't have any friends, don't pick bad ones. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. He said, I'm trying to win them. Oh, that's a bunch of hogwash. I don't believe that. I don't believe that's why people choose bad friends. I've been around too long. You can't convince me of that. If you're trying to win them, then try and win them. Yeah. Do it. Speak up. Yes. Tell whose side you're on. Yeah. Amen. Tell what you won't do. Uh -huh. yeah. Why do I say that? Because if you don't learn to do this when you're young, you'll be trapped by it when you're old. Yeah. You'll be surrounded by a bunch of friends and relatives that'll take you right straight to hell if you don't if you listen to them. Yes. To do it carefully. Condition of Sodom and Gomorrah was the result of retrogression. If Lot's wife was judged for looking at Sodom, <laughs> what about those that chose choose to live there? Think of it that way. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and Gomorrah and and the cities about them. 
There were five cities that were in general proximity there. I'll give you a little miniature map there. The gross immorality of these cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, spread. Huh? That's right. They spread uh -huh. to three other cities. Five cities were consigned to destruction. One of them, Zoar, was spared for Lot's sake. How long it was spared, I don't know, but it was spared for Lot's sake. You'll notice it was the first city outside Sodom and Gomorrah that you got to, and he couldn't make... When the destruction hit, this uh, like a holocaust happened in this whole area, and, and it he just barely got in Zoar when it happened, and it, it, it Zoar was exempted. That's why he asked the city he couldn't he couldn't make it out totally outside the perimeter of the curse. He could <laughs> he couldn't get out, so he made this plea and was granted some mercy. A little leaven leavened the entire region. Yeah. See. This is a precise reflection of the effect false teachers have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's why he likens it to Sodom and Gomorrah. Their corruption will spread until many are destroyed because of sin. Yeah. It's happened. It's happened in our day. Mm -hmm. These are those, Paul said, who defile the temple of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. 1 Corinthians 3.17. God doesn't say pray for these people. He says God's going to destroy these people. Hey, you get this really straight because I'm telling you the truth. Amen. You tamper yeah. with the church of God. Amen. You are in big Amen. trouble. Amen. Yeah. You have uh, one exception in Scripture, Saul of Tarsus. Mm -hmm. He made havoc of the church. Mm -hmm. He was retrieved. But God said, I'm going to show you now how great things you must suffer yeah. Yeah. for my name's sake. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people know this. A lot of the a lot of people are drawn to TV ministries and things like this. But those are dangerous people to become affiliated with unless unless it's a very unusual situation. People who defile the temple of God. Him that defiles a temple of God, God will destroy. First Corinthians three seventeen. You try to put wood hay and stubble in there and ask people. Try and put wood hay and stubble in there. How did all these hypocrites get in the church? How did they get in there in the first place? Yeah. Huh? It's because of some, what they heard. It's because of the message that was preached. They got in that way. That's the way they got it. There's nothing about the truth of the gospel that invite people like that in. Right. right up front, they're told, the way is straight. The gate is narrow, and the way is straight. Few there be that find it right away. They're told up front, if you don't mean business, you can't be my disciple. Amen. You don't take up your cross every day and follow me, I'll not teach you. Mm -hmm. You'll remain in your ignorance. If there's anybody you love more than me or even equal to me, yeah. I'll not teach you. Yeah. You can't be my disciple. See, all this is made known up front. Amen. The difficulty is the preachers aren't telling the people this. Amen. They're making it too easy. Uh -huh. Just repeat this prayer after me. Mm. Nothing like that in Scripture. That's right. Salvation is never depicted in Scripture as appropriated by prayer. Uh, amen. Isn't there? Uh -huh. But these use it. Mm. Now it says of the people in Sodom and Gomorrah, they gave themselves mm. to fornication. Wasn't accidental. Mm -hmm. Wasn't genetic makeup. Mm -hmm. They gave themselves to fornication. That's the opposite of presenting your body a living sacrifice to God. That's the opposite of that. That's right. You can throw in dope, uh -huh. heroin, meth. You can throw all that stuff in here too. People say, well, I'm addicted. You need to throw the, people need to throw that word, take that word addicted, and throw it in the garbage can. Amen. Yeah. It's a humanistic way of saying things. Right. They have become enslaved yes. by Amen. choice. Amen. They gave themselves to yes. fornication. Uh -huh. See, that's, that's sin. when sin dominates a person, enslaves a person, 
That's why it does. They gave themselves over to it. From a higher viewpoint, God gave them over to it. In other words, they kept drifting, 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 drifting till they got in the Satan's territory. And Satan rules in his territory just like God does in his. Yes. This is so ridiculous because Christ gave his life so that we could live for him. Mm -hmm. And for people to take that life and live it for other things yeah, themselves right. or something, that's these right. things that you're talking about here, it's utter foolishness because our only reasonable service is to live for him and glorify him in all mm -hmm. that we do. That's exactly right. Amen. 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 But I don't know of any recovery program that says that. But God does. See, it's not that Satan overpowered them. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. It's that they got into the area where he is, has power. Amen. You, Amen. you must resist the devil, yeah. not venture into his territory, because he's invincible in his territory. When you get in Satan's territory, he can't lose. If you get out, you've got to be delivered. And it can't be by a man or a system. Only God can deliver you. See, if there are people, I, I could name them by name, but I won't do it. But there are people that are living a little bit too close to Satan's territory. They're right close there where he can dominate. And the closer you get, there's like a drawing power. There. Yes, Sister Barbara started with something that seems very small, mm -hmm. such as a yield, mm -hmm. yielding to the yielding. flesh or That's yielding right. to Satan. You think of a yield as, as a slight hesitation with even an intention to go on. Mm. But that that hesitation, yeah. Yeah. it opens the door for Satan and it makes a place for him. Amen. Brother Gibbon, you know, you've talked about this before, you mentioned the point real well, but all you've got to mm -hmm. do is just give your ear. Yes. To something uh -huh. that's not right. That's mm -hmm. right. It's just that, just that little. That's right. Mm -hmm. You may do it. You you may you may do it and not actually realize it. But that's why you got to be on your guard. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, right. and don't don't get it close to an area. And and you people so you're just too reactionary. Mm -hmm. uh, but but this that's not the case at all. You have to be that careful. Amen. Yeah. That's why it's imperative that the people of God hear the gospel declared and expounded. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Continually, Amen. because only that message uh -huh. has power. Amen. No other message has power. Yes. yes. Amen. Uh, by Paul's saying that I give no place. No place to the devil. Uh -huh. Because, like you said, he's invincible in his territory. And Amen. 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 It's like you have so many. You have a number of rooms in your heart. You don't give any of them, Amen. even the smallest one, Amen. to the devil. Yes? I just heard the testimony of a man who shared that when he was a young boy, he fell into engaging in activities that at the time, even though he didn't actually enjoy those things, he did it because he wanted to fit in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He yeah. wanted to have people around him. And these were the people, this was the quickest way to get people to rally around him mm -hmm. by engaging in certain sinful behaviors while even just being somewhat disgusted by them. Mm -hmm. But he found himself enslaved to those That's things. Right. Mm -hmm. Now there are those people that, this is why I think we are, one reason why we are guarded against mm -hmm. wanting to please men because while there are people who get wrapped up in these things trying to please men there are even more uh, nefarious things going on where people can take on the trait of Satan and wanting to steal kill and destroy hmm. and underneath these things there are people what they want to do is they want to use others they want to use mm -hmm. them up for their own Amen. desires mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so, they merchandise. Right. Yeah. They don't. Have, they do not value things that God values. Mm -hmm. And so, it, and and they might do it in, in a way to say, well, look, we'll, we'll barter with you on this. Look what mm -hmm. we'll give you. But there are evil intentions underneath. The only one we can mm -hmm. trust in giving our whole selves to is God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Mm. Now remember, these are traits of false teachings that he's uh -huh. that's yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. That he's describing here. Mm -hmm. It's something that's not glaringly obvious, uh -huh. yeah. but it's, it's subtle. Mm. They come professing mm. that they know God, but in works they deny him. Mm. Yeah. They offer solutions that God doesn't offer. That of those in Sodom and Gomorrah, they went after strange flesh. Some versions say, for strange flesh, perversions, unnatural lust, pursued unnatural desire, homosexual activities. The sin of reference, sodomy, psychologically called homosexuality, the same, homo, the same. See, one man and wife are one flesh. Homosexuality says man and man is one flesh. Woman and woman is one flesh. See, that's that's what they teach. Not in those words, but that's what they that's what they teach. The sin of sodomy crosses a natural boundary. As well as a divine revealed boundary. These unnatural tendencies are condemned by God's word. Amen. I give you the text, you should be familiar with them. But human nature itself condemns it. One of the primary functions of the human race is to procreate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Multiply and fill the earth. Yeah. Sodomites can't procreate. Yeah. Each generation have to convert some people to their way of life. Each generation, one generation cannot perpetuate itself. Yeah. Uh -huh. See? That alone should tell. There should be no more evidence required than that. Yeah. That's right. But some people have in their thinking they have become beasts. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are closer to the order of beasts uh -huh. than the art of humanity. These false teachers were teaching things that could never be deduced from the gospel of Christ. Yeah, amen. So they had to have another gospel, mm -hmm. see, that would allow mm -hmm. for these things. At the bottom of their agenda, they allowed for the rise of sodomy. Mm -hmm. Now we have sodomite churches, oh. sodomite Christians. And now, now this professed sodomite churches and sodomite Christians mm -hmm. because of what's been taught. Yeah. Amen. God loves the homosexual. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very hard to believe that and read the account of Sodom. Yeah. And, amen. Amen. It's very difficult to believe that and then read how God gave them over, too. It's, mm -hmm. I, I, can't, I just can't get that out of those texts. Yeah, that's right. I get out of those texts that they have passed the circumference yeah. of divine love. Amen. They've got into an area where that yeah. they forfeited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. If it wasn't that way, God would not have destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. See, people should be able to reason this out. Uh -huh. When you have an unreasonable mm -hmm. religion, oh, this is a, a travesty. Mm -hmm. They're proclaiming teachings that contradict, like Balaam, he prophesied for wages. Uh -huh. As Peter said, he prophesied for He's the first hired pastor. <laughs> Prophesied for wages. Balak had to pay him. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> An approach to life in Christ that allows, that allows for the rise of false teachers, whether willingly or not, cannot possibly be from God. See, when you are there are a lot of churches in the land. I believe it's 320,000, something like that. 320,000 professed Christian assemblies in our country. Whatever allows false teaching to rise in any of those assemblies is not from God. Amen. Amen. See, God, what the message God gives doesn't allow. It doesn't have a weak area that permits these people to spring up. It doesn't do it. If the gospel is believed, it sensitizes the soul yes. to error. Amen. It makes the soul alert 
to shall we say foreign matter. But when the gospel's not preached, that is withdrawn. The people don't the people don't have that. Because that requires power. Yeah. And only the gospel has God is has power unto salvation in its totality. From beginning to end. There's only one message or one word that has power, divine power. And that's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if that is not preached and delineated and expounded. If some other message of friendship and do-goodism is adopted, the, fa the power is forfeited and sin gains control. <laughs> yes? One of the things that's being uh, bannered about in the church is, is that homosexuals can't really change. Mm -hmm. They cannot be changed. So what, what's being said is that there is the the gospel doesn't have power over that right. yeah. thing that right. but Paul Paul and Corinth a lot of people don't realize too that homosexuality was was rampant in the in the Greco Roman world. Yes it was. So when, when the apostles began to preach, when Paul went out and began to preach in the Gentile world, yeah. this was this was all through Gentile culture. Mm -hmm. Such were some of you. And that's what I was saying. And that's in First Corinthians six. Mm -hmm. He said, "Such were, but you were washed, you were sanctified." Mm -hmm. So there, people can people can be saved from this yes, lifestyle, uh -huh. but but it's very strongly being taught right now that that you can't be changed. That's just the way they are. Mm -hmm. That could, I suppose, be said of every sin. Yeah. 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 Amen. Thief, murder. Yes. Mm -hmm. sort of thing. Until, it, until it's recognized or made known to be that sin, yeah. that it's sin, mm -hmm. people will always try to come up with some kind of defensive mechanism yeah. because they don't want to call it sin. Of course, so does the drunk. He doesn't want to think it's sin either. You know, it's just just something that's <laughs> that he wants to do. But if it can be identified as sin and preached as sin, now now we have a remedy for that's it. Right. See the. The sodomite himself is not in as bad a state as the, the teacher that allowed allows yes, sodomy. Amen. See that yep. we're talking here about false prophets that allow this condition. As Brother Jason has said, and as is confirmed in Scripture, a sodomite can be delivered from that condition. But a preacher who allows that, the Scriptures don't say he can be delivered. Okay, because he's attempting to build. On God's house. Amen. Amen. It's a serious matter. Mm -hmm. And I would go this far that some doctrines that are preached are not intentionally <coughs> preached to allow for sin. Mm -hmm. That's why I qualify that mm -hmm. they, are sim they are simple, spiritually simple. They don't understand. Mm -hmm. But somebody in the body of Christ and the Case of Apollos, it was a, it was a, some members of a congregation there. It wasn't a preacher mm -hmm. <laughs> or a prophet. It was a husband and wife team. They saw it, mm -hmm. saw his deficiency, took him into the house, taught him the way of the Lord more perfectly, and he became a great, powerful mm -hmm. laborer in the kingdom of God. And he was he was an expert in the ways of God in Scripture before that uh -huh. happened. So this was not a, a novice. At all. Many, many churches that we're speaking about have already gotten to the place where they say not only do they not need, not only can they not change, they don't need to change. Yeah. Uh -huh. We need to receive them yeah. as yeah. they that's are right. because God has, that's what they're that's teaching. Right. That's I know God it. accepts them just as they are. Uh -huh. yeah, I know it. So now these, these are the type of people Jude is writing about. They're Sodom. They gave themselves over to fornication. What happened? And they just, they just sunk down. When you give yourself over, when you when you open the, all the doors of your mind and your heart, uh -huh. and you allow for sin. You, you begin a a descent, mm -hmm. moral and a spiritual descent. And now they're set forth as an example, uh -huh. suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. They. They show you what God's response to that kind of thing is. Mm -hmm. Sodom and Gomorrah, they show you what 
Yeah, remember, now we're delineating the nature of false prophets and how God will deal with them. Jude does not leave it up to the people to discern these things. He's going to he cite some examples of how God is. An example. We learn a lot about the purpose of Scripture and this expression. They serve as an example. Scripture is not just a chronology of historical events. See? These are strictly my own definition, but these are the discretionary thoughts of God embalmed in print. God not only tells you what he is, he shows you Amen. what he is. See, that's, that's what these examples, that's what these examples are for. It's not just an academic definition. See, they're in a, in a society that worships learning. All they need is like a statement or something like that. But see, God gives you some examples of how, how, how he acts and how he responds to various things. Men are not free to theorize about what God thinks. Even though some imagine that they, they, are, they can do this. Men may speculate about how God feels about all men. And they may make these grandiose statements about it. But scripture contains a lot of information about how God reacts to certain things. Ponder his response to the disobedience of Adam and Eve. Right, right away, in the third chapter of Genesis, we're confronted with this response of God to disobedience. There it is. We don't have to theorize about it. We don't have to speculate about it, hypothesize about it. There it is, a con in the concrete. We have how he responded to Cain. There it is. We have how he responded to Noah in Noah's day, how he responded when violence filled the earth. You don't, you don't have to have a doctrine about that. It's act, it, there it is, in action, Amen. what God thinks about that. What about the attitude of independence? How does God feel about the attitude of independence? Well, you've got it. The plain of China, the people went about to make a name for themselves. See, you know, God, God shows you. He, he, he doesn't just tell you. He shows you. That's no respect to persons. He shows you. God will not compete with your desires. Yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. He will not do it. I say, I affirm again, he will not do it. Amen. If you have desires that he doesn't sanction, God will go home. He'll not countenance that. Yeah. He'll leave just as surely as Jesus left Capernaum. Amen. He'll leave. Yeah. See, but people don't believe this. Right. They think they can live with competing desires and competing aspirations and still have fellowship with Christ. Not so. Amen. It will not happen. It's the way God is, and you've got it embalmed in print yes. and in historical events. The in That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. That's right. Good given. To that, some people would say, well, God won't compete with your desire. He won't, he'll he just let you do whatever you want to do. But if, you're, if your desire isn't the one to change, then his desire, like you said, it'll leave. Yeah. So it's not God who will change, but men who will change so that God can dwell in them. That's right. If, Amen. If men, let's say they champion doing what they want to do. Or the question is, what is the, going to be the conclusion of what you want to do. See, people don't think about that. Yeah. They just think the pleasures of sin for a season. They just think of now. Yeah. See, sin is a here and now thing. Sin yeah. is not a planned thing. It's a here and now thing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to think about what's, what's, how's this going to all conclude? Mm. That, that's how it is to be viewed. Yeah. We have uh, how God responds to faith in Abraham. We have how he responds to presumption in his approach to Abimelech who thought to take Sarah for his wife. He, re he rejects certain family members like Ishmael and Esau. See we have we have examples of this. Amen. We don't have to say God treats everybody alike. Well, <laughs> The person just exposed how stupid they are. Yeah. And how ignorant they are of Scripture yeah, when they say right. things like this. Yeah, right. 
would God raise up somebody to show his wrath in him and to make a name for himself? Because, oh, God wouldn't do that. Well, God did do that in Pharaoh. That's what he did. He said, for this cause I've raised you up to make a name for myself. And people still talking about what happened to Pharaoh. Mm, See, God's told you what he's like uh, in actions. What's his reaction to it? When a faithful man commits one blunder. What? what? Moses, he says, speak to the rock, Moses. The people so irritated Moses, who was the meekest man in all the earth, they so irritated him, he struck the rock. God said, that's it, you can't go into promised land now. So you may be tolerant of making mistakes. You may brush them aside. Don't talk to Moses about it. Don't think of God that way. God is, God is long-suffering. He has great grace. He's retrieved a lot of people, but you can't be loose about your ideas about God here. Amen. That's right. We have the example of Israel, who as a group chose not to believe God. And as a group, they were excluded from Canaan. Amen. There's a, the theft of Achan, who decided to take something God said not to take. Yeah. All right, there's people, love not the world. That people love it anyway. Yeah. Neither the things that are in the world. See, professing Christians do that anyway. They forget about Achan. When God says, don't, don't you dare do. Amen. That's it. That's it. It's a bombed in, in accounts, actual accounts of people. There's a response of a, God's response of a man who's after his own heart if he takes another man's wife. Got that in David. He says, now the sword's going to come on your house. Other men are going to rise up and take your wives, et cetera, et cetera. Shows you how God, this is God, now we're talking about God. God forgave him, but he lived with the effects of it the rest of his life. This is God, now we're talking about. We have the response of, to God of pretentious worship in Israel. He called their worship noise. Take away the noise of your vials. The new covenant Scriptures have the response of God to Jerusalem rejecting Jesus. Their house is left desolate. There's a lion of Ananias and Sapphira, how God treated that. And the judgment of the Corinthians, some of whom died and others got sick because they were fooling around at the Lord's table with an improper mind. See, so there's, there's, there's no reason for anybody to be ignorant of God. There's doctrinal statements about God, revelations about his person, and there's historical events that tell you what God's like. Without any, and they're, they're quite clear. Amen. Actually quite clear. There's no need for anyone to hypothesize about the reaction of God to men. Yeah. No reason at all. Or who he accepts or who he rejects. Mm -hmm. The vengeance of eternal fire. Just the, just the phrase. He's warning the people now the effects of false prophets. We have an example of where it leads, the vengeance of eternal fire, which means there was no recovery, yeah, amen. no retrieval, nothing was salvaged, everything was lost. The wrath of God broke forth upon them and upon those who accepted their corruption in these other cities. They are just done away with. That's why we are told, mark those that cause divisions. Uh -huh. yes. And offenses contrary to the doctrines you've learned and avoid them. That's why we are told. Mm -hmm. Those that have a form of godliness and deny the fire thereof from such, turn away. Now, now see, the <coughs> you are not given liberty in this area. Amen. Amen. That's right. You say, well, I'd like to, I want to work with them. Oh. Turn away. That's what it says. Amen. And then concerning spiritual Babylon, which is the where all these things can flourish, mm -hmm. he says, come out from among yes. her, my people. Yes. Amen. Why? That you be not partaker of their sins, yes. and that you receive not of her plagues. Get yes. out of there. Amen. You say, well, I don't know what Babylon is. Then learn what it is. Yes. This word from God, take it seriously. Yeah. Get out of there. Amen. 
Whatever that means, that you, you've got to apply yourself to know what it means. Have believers heed that solemn warning because Sodom and Gomorrah are set forth as examples of what happens when you are led astray and you begin to go down a path of deterioration. Sodom and Gomorrah tell you where that ends. Likewise, verse 8, likewise, same way. These are in that class. Think of that. They're in the class of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's who they're classed with. These filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil dignities. Likewise, in the same manner, they're the false prophets are to the church what Sodom and Gomorrah was to the other cities. That's who they are. They have the, these false teachers have the kind of traits they were found in Sodom and Gomorrah. They are centered in self. They are characterized by living in the flesh and rejecting all forms of God-ordained authority. Their teachings are designed to pacify the flesh. They're adapted to this present evil world. They're filthy dreamers. Other versions say in their dreamings, with their visions, in their delusions. This identical circumstance about dreamers, this identical circumstance happened in Israel. False prophets were directly were directed by their own dreams. Jeremiah 23. 25 and 27. They, they, they were directed by their own dreams and visions that they themselves concocted. A contemporary uh, evidence of such direction is the Lord told me or the Lord showed me. My antennas go up. Whenever I hear that. Yeah. It may be true, but it's got to be put to the test. Right. Yes, yeah. See, let, the, let the prophets speak. Amen. Let the others judge. Yeah. But the Lord showed me. Uh -huh. Somebody in the assembly has got to be able to detect whether that's right or not. Uh -huh. We just can't take people's word for that. Amen. See? And it's kind of common in certain denominations that people out of, out of habit talk uh -huh. this way. Well, the Lord showed me. The Lord told me. Well, that may be true. But it's best to say it another way because it's, the others are going to judge what you said. Yes. See if it is true. In other words, false prophets were directed by their own imaginations and their own contemplations. They're called filthy dreamers because what they say is defiling yeah. and polluting. Yeah. They defile the flesh. Now, what exactly does that mean? Because the flesh is already f vain and no good thing is in it. Why say defile the flesh? Other versions read, and they're right in here, pollute their own bodies. So he's not talking about the carnal nature. He's talking about your bodies that are to be given to God as a living sacrifice. The body becomes the vehicle of self-gratification uh -huh. yeah. rather than being given to God. See, the scriptures say the body is for the Lord uh -huh. and the Lord for the body. Uh -huh. So your bodies, they're not for your pleasure and enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Although some of that, you experience some of that, but that's not primarily what they're for. Right. They're to be a vehicle mm -hmm. by which you serve God. They defile the flesh. They use the body for other purposes. Uh -huh. huh? Uh -huh. They do not present their bodies a living sacrifice to God, and they don't advocate that you do it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They defile the flesh. They give it to ignoble uh -huh. purposes, yeah. temporary, the pleasures of sin for a season, so to speak. And they, they despise dominion or reject authority, set it not dominion. They don't like anyone to be over them. Yeah. Now, even though uh, the Lord says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. Even though God says that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, among professing Christians, there are a lot of political rebels. Oh, yeah. 
There are. Mm-hmm. You better you better not be one. Amen. Got a word from God on this now. We understand that if the government tells you to disobey God, that you're not, it's not talking about that. It's talking about the government as it's to be employed for the subduing of evil and the promotion of good, this sort of thing. If you're Peter and the temple authorities say, speak no more in his name, and you, 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 don't, you don't subject yourself to that. You say, well, you judge whether we ought to obey God rather than men. See, so if you're uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Nebuchadnezzar said, bow down to this idol, you don't subject yourself to that. They'd be breaking the law of God. Say, we're not going to do it. If you're Daniel, the government says, don't pray to any other god. But Darius... He said, we're not going to, you know, we're going to do it. We're not going to obey that. See, but that's, that's not breaking that law as given in Romans 13. When there's a law issued that competes and contradicts the law of God, you do not subject yourself to it. Amen. So, see, people, schools, families, this churches did wrong when the government said you can't pray in public. Mm. Professing Christianity said, okay, mm-hmm. all right, we won't pray in public. Christian chaplains, with a few exceptions, said, all right, we won't pray in Jesus' name. They shouldn't have done that. That's right. They should not have done that. The prison should have been filled up with Christians, so much so it inconvenienced the government. Yeah. Should not do so. When the government says, don't pray, <laughs> don't say, well, i got to obey the rulers. That's not what he's talking about uh-huh. when he says that. Despise dominion. Yeah. Peter said elsewhere, of the same thing, they despise government. Second yeah. Peter 2.10. Now Peter wrote to believers, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or governors. If, if uh, the governor says 30 mile an hour, it's 30 mile an hour. You know. If he says so much taxes, pay so much taxes. That's the kind of thing he's talking about. Every ordinance of man. See, the word of God's clear on this. Amen. But when it competes with God, and that, that's, that's another, another matter. That's right. uh, people must heartily endeavor to do what God says to do yeah. and to avoid what God says to avoid. Amen. And if some people are confused about this, they don't, well, I don't know how to tell the difference, then you get to work on it. Pray, become familiar with the word, find out the answer. Don't live your life you know, with a big question mark over this area. God's made clear what you're to do and what you're not to do. Endeavor, endeavor to do it. And they speak evil of dignities. Some versions say revile angelic magistries, slander celestial beings, slander the glorious ones, slander the angels. I don't believe that's the proper translation. I don't think it's right. Many of these translations completely miss the point. To begin with, the evil men don't believe in angels. And the next verse is going to tell us that this included Satan. I've heard preachers preach they would call Satan that old slew foot. Yeah. Call him names. Don't do it. He's a he's a dignitary. He's a wicked dignitary, but he's a dignitary. He has been given legitimate authority. So don't rail on him. Don't scoff him. Don't rail and scoff at dignities of any sort, political or otherwise. Don't do it. See, he's become fashionable. He used to do it. Call these people names and this sort of thing. See, what about here? It said, go tell that fox. Well, I wouldn't call that scorn and denigration. It was a very mild expression. But false prophets, see, they have to do this because they're wanting people to obey them. They're wanting people to listen to what they say, so they've got to subdue any kind of subjection to anybody else. That's why they do this. But it's interesting to me that he, that he says this. 
because I know there's a tendency, it breaks out in waves. There come time people just feel free and oh, yeah. speaking critically of dignities and calling them names and things like this. It's just not a good practice Amen. to get into. So I know this is a touchy subject. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on it when we get to that next verse. That Michael, who is pretty, I would say he's wise, he didn't dare cast a radiant accusation at the devil. He didn't dare do it. He said, the Lord rebuke you. Hey, some people say, you rebuke the devil. Huh? Oh, yeah, this is taught. He said that the Lord rebuke thee. We're not high enough. <laughs> That's right. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting dialogue, isn't it? This mm -hmm. in Jude here. It, it's uh, mm -hmm. you find yourself being compelled to think quite, quite different from yes. the normal Christian community when you read texts like yeah. this. Yes. That anarchy is not the context in which godliness can be developed. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Rebellion. This, this isn't the kind of soil mm -hmm. that spiritual life grows in. I, I can see why it's this way. It's more than just a law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's telling you, you have, to, you have to have tender subjectivity to God, yeah. total subjectivity to him, mm -hmm. and this will because you know God himself is over these lower dignitaries, then you will, you will be cautious about yes. speaking in a derisive manner about them for that very reason, see? Yes. But these false teachers led people in another, in another direction. I think I'll close there, and if you have a... Yes, Brother Jason. Yeah, that last part there uh, speaks of uh, the pride of these pride, that's right. mm -hmm. these false teachers, and that that is a that is a mark of mm. people that lead other people yes. astray. A very arrogant, proud, mm. and uh, that's mm. also a trait of the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So they're reflecting. Mm. They're reflecting their origins. Yes. Mm. Which yeah. should warn all of us against undue arrogance and pride. Well, yes. Amen. This is not a good. This is not a good trait. We, we should be confident in the Lord Amen. Amen. and in His word yeah. and His might, but not not be arrogant in ourselves. God Amen. hates a proud look. Yes. Amen. Just a proud look. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this uh, whole section that you went over here to set forth as an example. This, um, you know, this. If 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 people could just get a hold of this, yeah. that God has 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 set forth the way he feels, the way he thinks, the way he reasons about these people yes. in the scriptures. It's very, very direct. Yes. It's very, very um, sobering if you see it right. But if we don't have to have a big, long discourse about how he feels about murderers. He's, he's, told, he's shown us That's right. by these examples. And I think if, if this was understood, we, we wouldn't have people... I mean, people that are sincere anyway, yeah. coming to the wrong conclusions like about about sodomy. They, they, they would just say, yeah, I can see it, what he did. But see, they, they don't, I don't feel like they, they, they trust that. They've been hearing something else from the preacher. And even though they may feel like this isn't right, they don't, they don't know how to reason. But this is a very powerful uh, application of that set forth as an example. And if, I think if people could see that, they would be able to work their... Their faith would be able to work through the, the matter. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Lewis. I was thinking too in this that um, them being likened to Sodom and Gomorrah, could, you could call them likened to m murderers because uh, as you, you brought out, so yeah. Sodomites yeah. cannot have, you know, multiply. Mm -hmm. Well, their <clears throat> false teachers are really out to murder you in a sense because they're out to uh, take your faith. I mean, you'll die That's if you right believe here. these things. So really, it's, it's the end is death. And, and I also thought what makes this all so bad, the sodomy, the false teachers and all, is because everything's supposed to glorify God. And he intended to, there to be a lot of people to glorify. It's going to take mm -hmm, a lot mm -hmm. of people to glorify him. Well, if you diminish that, you That's diminish right. his glory. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Amen.
things, the per people who crept in unawares, these false teachers, the things that they taught were so deadly because it was another gospel, as Paul says, because it led them away from God mm -hmm. Mm. while making them think that they're going to God. That's a, also a trait of the devil. You le he leads them into darkness, making them think that they're going to light. But there's just a slight diversion, so it still looks like you're going in the same general direction. But later on down the line, it's terribly skewed, even if it wasn't off very much at the beginning. Mm. So that's a trait of a false gospel now that is that it leads you away from God. That's right. Mm. That's right. Yeah. So Leah? If you get punished by God, you are not out of the race. You are forgiven because Jesus died for us so our sins can be forgiven, and we are if you ask. Mm. That's good. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah, it changes a person's attitude about sin when they know they have to be forgiven. Yeah. All right, we'll close there. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Brother Jude. How you stirred him up to speak on this critical subject and how he did it with great clarity and wisdom. We thank you, Father, for caring enough for thy people to warn them about these matters. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.